Hey guys, welcome back to the preamp build. So in the last video, we finished off the case for the time being. Won't really worry about it anymore until we need to punch a few more holes in it. Uh, I finally got the shipment from Mauser, so I should have all the components to uh, finish off the preamp. What I normally do now is just a quick organization of all the components. Uh, just put all the resistors and the capacitors together. Nothing major, it doesn't take very long, so uh, let's do that real quick. Okay, so this should be all the components that um, we need to build the preamp. Next thing is to tidy up the workbench a little bit and get everything ready for uh, soldering. So the first components I'm going to be soldering on are the JFET amplifiers. They're surface mount components. So they're extremely small and can be quite challenging to solder on. Uh, if this is your first soldering project, uh, there's a couple things you can do if you're not comfortable soldering the surface mount components. Um, like I said before, the signal path for the moving magnet and moving coil are completely separate uh, and the JFET amplifiers are only used in the moving coil section. If you're not planning on using the moving coil section, you just leave them out um, and then your moving magnet section will still work. And then later on in the future, if you do decide to use a moving coil, you just solder the amplifiers on. Alternatively, this board is also available with the amplifiers pre-soldered. It's $15 more, and considering these, these amplifiers are probably going to run you about $2 a piece, you're paying around $7 to have them soldered on for you, which is quite a good deal. So there's lots of different ways to apply service mount components. You can find many videos on YouTube on the best way to solder them up. I find what works well for me is just to apply a little bit of solder paste onto the pads, place the component on, and then give it a quick, quick blast with the soldering iron, and it usually is enough to just melt the paste and attach the pads, attach the feet onto the pads. Solder up the last two. Okay, I'm going to clean them up and check the continuity, make sure they're on there, make sure they're on there good. Okay, so to clean up the residuals, I just use isopropanol. Okay, so let's test continuity here. Make sure we made connections. Okay, so... Oh, 
This one here. That's a, that's okay. So it looks like by some miracle those are soldered in properly. They're making the right connections, and there's no shorts between any of the leads. So next thing I do is move on to the resistors. Again, just double check, triple check everything before you solder them down, uh, and keep everything nice and organized. Okay, here we go. Okay, once we have all the resistors in position, we'll flip the board over. I like to bend all the pins in one direction, make sure nothing falls out. Some of them will still tend to slide out. Pick a set, pull them over to one side, make sure the actual resistors are tight. Apply quick heat. Put some solder on. And the joint is finished. Resistors are soldered and tested, they all checked out. Uh, next component I'd like to put on are the diodes and anything else that's low to the surface board. So there's a couple switch banks here, uh, some IC sockets, so those will all go on next. <laughs>
So our circuit board has all our diodes and all our resistors soldered in place and tested. They're all making good contact with the circuit board. So the next time I'll be adding the rest of the components from smallest to largest, soldering them in place and again checking them all out. So until then, see you later.